So looking at the drawing there for the lampshade, I notice it does have rounded corners there. The blue lines are the cut lines, so the outside lines, and then the red lines are fold lines. So these red lines will be scribed. Circle there is a hole. It's uh, uh, radius five for the M10 bolt to go through. That way, when the this net is folded and it becomes the lampshade, you'll be able to just put the uh, M10 nylon bolt through the hole and attach it into the threaded side of the long arm. So these are the tools that you'll need. Uh, liquid metal polish, some sort of rag, cloth, paper towel, whatever, whatever. Flat file for rounding the corners. Oddleg caliper. So this is a great little time-saving tool, the Oddleg caliper. Um, gives it much more accurate marking out. You'll see how to use that shortly. Engineer's square, steel ruler, engineer's scriber, and then some aluminium sheet. Uh, to go with that, we'll also be using the brake press to guillotine um, all the cuts on the aluminium, and then we'll use the folding section of the of the apparatus there to turn the net into um, a three-dimensional form. So to use the odd leg caliper, what we have to do, um, the overall width of the lampshade or of the net is 70 millimeters. So with this part of the odd leg caliper, where is like a, a, a foot, that's going to go on the end of the steel ruler and that will stop a little that small foot area there will stop against the bumper of the ruler so we can then adjust the scriber part of the odd leg caliper up to the 70 millimeter dash on the steel ruler okay so looking at the straight edge on the aluminium sheet, I can now run that same part, the, the foot part of the other leg caliper. I'm going to drag it along that side, that side edge, drag it all the way along. Just like that. And it gives you a nice parallel line to this edge, 70 millimeters all the way across. So that saves any uh, any mistake with measuring here and doing a dash, measuring there, doing a dash, then drawing the drawing the two dashes up. In place of doing that, you can just use the odd leg caliper. So the next measurements I need to do, I've got 20, and then this one, the two red lines are 30 millimetres apart from each other. So if I'm working from this edge, I'm going to do 20 mil, then I'm going to do 20 and 30, so 50 mil for that edge there. So I'll just close the odd leg caliper until it meets the 20 millimeters on the ruler. Then open it to 50, like so. It's this side. Don't get your sides mixed up. Okay, so now I have this section, the middle section, top section. I'm going to guillotine that off now. So you've always got to bring the arm, the lever down towards you. Don't work it so that you're pushing away because it could end up putting too much strain on the um, on the leg stand. So I'm looking for the scribe line to be underneath the blade of the guillotine 
Guillotine works with sheer, sheer force, so this blade here doesn't actually touch the plate. It just goes past it like this. Very close to it, but just goes past. And it shears, it shears. The, the motion is a sheer motion, a sheer force, and that's how um, it cuts the metal. Okay, so now we've got the height or the width, I should say, and the three uh, sections there. What I need to do next is looking at the drawing here, the overall length, the biggest measurement is 150. So put 150 there on the ruler, do a dash at the bottom there. And get your tri square. Scroll up till you can find that dash like this. Pinch the square against the aluminium sheet. Make sure the handle is touching the side of the aluminium sheet. And then drag it across, drag the scriber across there. So now I've got the shape, it's the overall maximum shape now. So I can make the, um, I can go back to using the odd leg caliper for marking out this vertical and this vertical here. So this measurement here and this measurement here, as you can see, both different. That's clearly longer than this one. So if we look at the measurements, we've got 30 mil. So we know that one's 30. We know the overall length of the, the main body is 100. So 30, 100 is 130. Take that from 150, you're left with 20. So that must be 20 there. So I'm going to set the uh, set the other leg now to 20. Okay, 20 millimeters. And then drag down there and set it to 30 for this one over here. <coughs> and draw that down there like that so you should be able to see that now 20 100 30 20 30 20 right so what we have to do is cut this section out here and this section and this section on that section. Cut those out, drill a hole and round the corners off with the small flat file. Okay so I've indicated the sections that need cutting off. I use the blue sharpie for that. It just makes it a bit more clear for when you come over to the machine. So I'm going to use the end of the, the blade or doing these cuts and I'll use the other end of the blade for doing the opposite cut so line it up when you line it up on the guillotine try and stop the blade to about here because you're going to tear about two millimeters of it so if you stop two millimeters short to take into account for that tear um, it should line up with the perpendicular line. So, best to do all these cuts first. So you've got four of these ones. Do all four like that. Now use the back of the vise for a nice hard surface to gently flatten these lifted up pleated parts to flatten them back down. So just a few light taps, a few light taps rather than, rather than big taps, just do several light taps and you'll find that the 
the little off cut pieces come flat and that means that the tear well where it started to lift here is flat as well so that will go nice and smoothly back into the other side of the guillotine okay so we're going to use the other side of the guillotine like so you can see it's removed the that perpendicular line I've cut down that perpendicular line and off comes the off cut um, you've got that lift again here but we can just take that back to the back of the vise and just give it a few more taps the important thing is though that it removes without tearing unnecessarily and the last one okay so we've now got this shape what we're going to do now is file the corners and drill the hole so filing the corner on a piece of metal it's always good to have the right angle sticking upwards pointed upwards towards the ceiling as if it was like an hour ahead and then you go into you want to have it as low into the vise as possible so that the cheeks of the vise are grabbing the top of the, um, the the corner just below where you're going to start filing with the flat side of the file you start on the left hand side and then as you push the file forwards you're going to rotate the file round so that the top of the file here finishes on the right hand side so if you do that several passes just like in this sort of motion here so you push forwards as you're pushing forward you twist and when you get halfway along the file you'll find that the um the, the corner of the the metal sheet in this occasion it's aluminium the corner will be touching the center of the file as you get halfway down so we'll just have a look at this now just put make sure you're guiding it so your spare hand will go at the tip of the file here and then Obviously not a nice, very nice noise. Let's, let's do down the camera. So after several passes, there was probably about five or six passes there, um, you can see that you've got a nice rounded corner. And that's probably all you need to do, is just to take away that sharp edge away from your work. So just around, rounding the corner off just like that to take away the sharp edge. So let's do the next corners you need to get the work as close the corner needs to be as close to the vice cheeks as possible so that again it's pointing upwards on this occasion that's pretty much um, as low as I'm going to be able to get it so the higher up it is the more it's going to vibrate and the more uh, when the file makes contact with the metal the, the vibration is going to create a very high pitched squeaking noise, which a lot of people don't enjoy very much. So, just like this. Now, these, the, all the other corners don't need rounding as much as that first one we did, because um, these are going to be all joined together. We just need the, the main radius of about, radius about five mil radius there. Um, on this on this 30 millimeter square section here right I'm going to continue with this anyway so just to demonstrate that vibrating noise um, it's quite high up the material is quite high up in the vice there if I try filing the corner here you can see that the aluminium is uh, moving quite quite a bit probably 10 millimeters either way there so you're not going to have a nice finish and it's going to create an unnecessary amount of noise so we've got that compared with that this the latter of the two demonstrations is the um, the proper way of doing it so low down as close to the vice cheeks as possible gives you a neater finish and less noise 
So after the rounding the corners off here, it's created a bit of a burr, so a rough edge. So we just need to lie the work flat, clamp it down, make sure it's secure, and then just give it a quick a quick file, quickly burr like this on the corners. And then whilst it's clamped, we're going to drill that hole at M10. So to find the center, really simple, just need to draw across from corner to corner. Okay. Right, so using the center punch and hammer to put a little a small dent right on the intersection of those scratch lines a little dent in there for pre preparation for when um, when we come to drill it so now I've center punched I'm going to start off with a 3.5 mil drill bit place it over the hole make sure the bottom of the forward arrow is pressed down and then I'm going to move up to the a five millimeter drill bit now. Work your way up through the through the drill bit sizes. Gives you much safer operation. You don't need to drill into the wood. Well, you can drill into it, but you don't need to drill through the drill board. You know, some people get quite excited when they're holding the drill and end up drilling right through into the worktop. It's not necessary. So what we've got here is the 10 mil M10 hole, or the radius 10, it's actually a radius 5, I should say. It's a 10 millimeter hole ready for the M10 bolt to go through. So obviously this is going to need a bit of deburring now. So again, lie it down, clamp it down. Just file the back. File the front, make sure it's all nice and smooth. Well, before you start folding or doing anything else, Peel that protective film off. Now what we've got is a good shape, but it has lots of scratches on it. So to get rid of those scratches, or to at least disguise the scratches, what we have to do now is use a piece of uh, 400 grit paper and give what, what's known as a brushed, a brushed finish. So just hold your work down whichever way feels comfortable and then wrap the paper underneath your middle finger and you can secure it with your fourth and your index finger like that. And just go across 45 degree pattern. Do that all over. You will lose that occasion. <clears throat> you want to spend about two minutes doing this. Once you've gone that way, you need to then go the opposite way. So you're going to go perpendicular to those first uh, lines that you've just created. Try and go all the way across from side to side. So although you're creating lots of new scratches in there, it, it acts as a disguise. 
and makes your initial construction lines a bit more discreet for any dents from uh, filing or anything like that. Okay. So the longer you spend doing this, the better the finish will be. So you hopefully will spend a lot longer than what I've just done. What I will do now, as you can see, it's quite oily. Um, the aluminium has got the, it's quite oily, quite greasy. So what I'll do next is put some liquid metal polish on a cloth. Just work that in. That will remove. Do on the back as well, although it's although it's had the protective film on, it will still have some. Uh, oil build up on the back there, just get rid of it all like this. Okay, so it gives like a dull finish, a matte finish, and that creates a nice pattern in there. As I said before, though, you'll spend longer on this than what I just have done. The last thing we need to do now is put it into the brake press, into the folding part of it, and then we're going to form. The actual lampshade shape. So bend all the the long pieces first. And move round to the ends in this little part here. So there's your basic shape now, basic lampshade, you need to bring these sides in a bit more, have a have a play about with that to get rid of all the gaps. Um, okay so I've gone over the sides with the hammer and used the vise to squeeze the sides in a bit more just to get rid of the gaps. So fettling, fettle is the last thing you do. And it's where you just finish off any scratches that, that have been created after um, after the forming process, just before you attach it to the, um, the the top arm there with the M10 nylon bolt. You need to fettle, get rid of any rough edges, so that the customer is ready to take possession of the finished product. So I can feel just here there's a bit, there's a bit of a rough edge. So I'm going to get the small flat file on there. Um, I've created a couple of extra shiny lines there from the vise while I was shaping, helping to, to bring these sides in. So I need to just go over that as well with the 400 grit paper, get rid of any um, any discrepancies really. You want the finish to be even, consistent. So we'll just go back over the, all the sides with the 400 grit paper um, and that will be, that's called fettling. So fettle is a um, a professional uh, procedure that they would do in industry before the finished item goes on to the customer or to the client. Right, well that's it now, that's the lampshade completed. After I've connected this to the top arm of the lamp, I'll then attach the strip of LEDs to there and solder um, the cable onto the end of the, the strip. Okay, well that's it, thanks for watching.